in James 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. James here says that there is, an, there is within the believer's spirit sufficient power by the Holy Ghost to endure temptation and not fall in to a cycle of sin. James, in clear terms, says, Blessed, makarios, happy, blessed, joyful, is the one who endures temptation. I want you to write this in the comment section. I can endure temptation. I can endure temptation. In my generation of preachers, unfortunately, there's a false teaching circulating that in this life, we will never be able to resist temptation successfully. There's always going to be failure on this side of eternity. That's not the standard that the Bible, uh, that's not the bar, rather, that the Bible sets for the believer. Jesus himself told the woman caught in adultery that you should go and sin no more now that I've forgiven you. Jesus told the man that was healed in James chapter, uh, John chapter 5. He goes back to find him in the temple and he says, Now that you've been made well, go and sin no more, lest you fall into a worse state of things. Jesus, talking to the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, says that we should pray always, for the spirit is willing, the flesh is weak, therefore pray always that you enter not into temptation. So there's a way to not enter in to being a victim of temptation every single time it comes knocking on your door. Now, let me make this straight. Let me make this clear. There's always going to be temptation on this side of eternity because we still have the flesh and we still have the carnal uh, body to deal with. And the Bible makes it clear in Galatians 5 that the deeds of the flesh, or rather the desires of the flesh, are evident. There's always going to be a tug of war. Temptation is always going to be a reality for the born-again believer, even on this side of eternity, because we have not entered into a glorified body that is immune to temptation, a perfect body that doesn't carry any type of fleshly nature to it. But the Bible teaches that though we as born-again believers will still face temptation, we don't have to enter into temptation. We don't have to fall victim to temptation. You can win. Let me make this clear to you right now, you that are watching. There's over 100 people watching live right now, and I know there's going to be many watching on the replay, and I want to make this so clear that you can't miss it. You can win every battle against sin in this life. You can win every battle against sin in this life. Paul said in Romans 6 that we are no longer under the dominion of sin, but sin is under our dominion. Now here's where people get mixed up. Brother Ted Shuttlesworth Jr., he put this tweet out the other day, and it, it rings so true. And it, it'll clarify a lot. For people that believe, I don't understand what he's saying. You know, I still sin. You may have still sinned. You may still sin tomorrow. But the fact is, is that the big biblical bar is that you don't have to sin. And the standard is holiness. Jesus said, be perfect as he is perfect. And the book of 1 Peter says that we should be holy even as our Father is holy. The standard is God's holiness. And here's what Brother Ted Shuttlesworth Jr. said. When a Christian sins, it's not because sin has once again gained dominion over them. As a Christian, sin has no dominion over you. But the reason, so here's why Christians sin. The reason a Christian sins is because he fails to exert this authority over the sin nature that remains in the flesh. 1 Corinthians 9.27, Galatians 5.17. But make no mistake, Christians have authority over sin and their flesh, and every battle is winnable. I want you to write that in the comment section. Every battle against sin is winnable. 
So James 1, verse 12 says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. You don't have to sin every day, no matter what that backslidden preacher said. You can win the battle over your flesh, put it in its place, have it no, not exert any influence over your actions, thoughts, or will, but have your spirit man in charge exerting its influence over your actions, your thoughts, and your will.